Seam carving is a technique for dynamically resizing images, not just for cropping them or for stretching them disproportionately, but to resize them in a way that's aware of the content inside them. So we have this full size image, and then if we, we can resize it down vertically here, and we haven't just chopped that bottom chunk of the image off, we've actually pulled out intervening elements of the image where it's not visually noticeable. And the result is that this image you're seeing here, even though it's almost half the height, looks visually coherent. And it doesn't look cropped, it just looks kind of like the mountains got closer together and the clouds kind of all lined up next to each other. For this new cinema project with IBM and Creators Project, we were exploring themes of flooding and water kind of intervening into spaces that someone's trying to cross. And so it occurred to me that this technique was perfect because you could kind of expand and contract water as that distance needed to shrink or expand. In all these examples, I'm working in processing, and I'm working with a library that I'd written in processing called dynamic programming, which is optimization technique that has lots of applications, one of which is seam carving, kind of the coolest of which is seam carving. So this sketch is really designed to illustrate how seam carving works. So we start with this original image on the right here, this kind of strange painting, which was one of the original images in the original paper. And this edge detection algorithm we ran in the beginning that's how we chose the important parts. You can see this mask on the left, the edges of it really show up as being valuable, and the faces of both the people, like those are the parts we've decided that we want to keep of the image, that we want to distort last. Because edges of images are something that you notice. Expensive means that it's part of the image we really don't want to eliminate. So the goal is to find the path from the bottom to the top that's the cheapest. And we could do that in this incredibly iterative way where we try each possible one, but there'd be zillions and zillions of them and that would take forever. So that's why we generate this middle picture here. It's basically the result of pre-doing all of that stuff in this kind of efficient way with this dynamic programming technique. So what this image really represents is at each pixel it represents the cost of the cheapest path from there to the top. So the best path, the place that interferes with the least of the important parts of the image from any pixel to the top will be the darkest one. But you see, as we go through here, I'll go through and I'll eliminate seams. So that red line is showing which pixels we're eliminating. And then you can see the image on the right just stays rectangular, but it shrinks down. Because if we subtract one pixel from each row of the image, image it's still rectangular, but just one pixel less wide. So if I go through and do that, you'll see the, the weight image in the middle changes each time. Um, and also the image gets smaller. But you see it's getting smaller, but the edges aren't changing. The, this, the side of the dress here is still the same distance from the side of the image. This mask right here is still pinned to the left. Um, and at any point, if I, when you see it changing rapidly, it looks like a strange uh, kind of video effect. But when it's still, it doesn't look very distorted. You wouldn't necessarily know it. It's not like a big chunk of the image is this way or it's chopped down the side of a figure or anything like that. Until you get in real small, here, you can start to really see the distortions. But even then, still, even this far in, now we're starting to see the curtains go around their faces and stuff like that. But the faces, which are the most important part of the image, as you can see over here in the contour, um, really haven't changed that much. So that's, that's kind of the process here for how this works.